All right. With respect to the scope of uh, CFA, again, putting in a, uh, because uh, the one question that I get is, what is the salary expectation I can get? Or if I complete CFA, what is going to be my promotion? Will I get a promotion after doing CFA? What kind of salary I'll get? Uh, once I also was given a question that if I take your classes, will I, uh, do, do I guarantee that, uh, that if I follow everything that you're saying, will I clear the exam? I do not provide any guarantee. I don't want to give any miscommunications on those. So there is no guarantee. I am just giving you all the information. It's up to you to decide. Uh, with respect to the salary part, now it is very difficult to put a price quote or a price tag on any of the designations. Now when you're looking at even a B school graduate or a chartered accountant or CFA, you can have salaries as low as 10,000, 20,000 rupees. You can have salaries as high as 10 lakh, 20 lakh rupees per month also. So the point I'm trying to make over here is I cannot give you an exact salary figure. That will be very wrong on my part. Now when you're talking about the salary part, <clears throat> first question that you need to ask is the designation is one thing. Along with that, how good are you at giving a presentation? Will you be able to talk in front of the board and give a presentation to them? Do you have the requisite Excel, PPT, whatever skills, IT skills are needed? Are you that fast that you can do the work of two people uh, uh, yourself? Do you have that kind of general knowledge, finance and economies knowledge that you can apply and do the valuation so well? Are you very, very well read? Is your vocabulary very good? Are you very presentable? Can you uh, debate very well? Because in an office, when there is a discussion, you need to prove your point. You need to be able to get the work done. Ultimately, you are not going to be paid because you have an XYZ degree. You are going to be paid, say for example, for a job, you will be paid because you can earn a certain amount of revenue for the company. If you will be earning 10 lakh rupees for the company, the company will probably give you 1 lakh rupees. You want to make a comparison, just check the employee's expenses and you check the profit that the companies make and you'll understand what money that the employees are generating and what is the salaries being given out to them. So if you're able to generate revenue for the company, you will be paid. People ask for raises, promotions and increments in the salary. But what has been your learning uh, curve growth? What has been your additional work that you're doing in the office? Without that, how can you demand a raise in the salary? So before questioning the increment or before questioning the salary, you need to, we, need to, we need to start questioning where is our growth happening or what is our output when we are working. So when you're looking at CFA designation, it tells the employer that this person has qualified CFA. So therefore, he would be having a knowledge of finance and all. Whether you will be able to apply the knowledge or not, that is the second question. For that, it becomes very important that you're very well read about the economy in general, about the markets, about the, <clears throat> uh, what do you call it, uh, the, 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 the uh, political uh, scenario. So you need to know what is happening around you in order to be able to apply the knowledge. So once you start off with your course, once you start off with CFA, your preparation and all, parallelly, please make sure that you start reading. How many business books, management books and all these, uh, uh, all these resources have you gone through? I have questioned quite a few times that how many uh, business books have you read? How many of you have read one business book at least? Be very honest. So that is the answer. So now when, how can you comment, how can you ask for a very good salary in these kind of situations? When you are not putting in that effort yourself. So anyways, it's not about the criticism, it is about that what we need to do next. So I keep on passing my books over here in class itself that, you know, you read this. So, you know, one book is being read by 20 people, so it's worth it. So I want you guys to start getting into a lot of reading habit. It is going to be extremely important. Bill Gates read 140 plus books last year. Warren Buffett spends 80% of the time reading throughout the day. Um, Elon Musk was reading like he read like 60, 70 books in two months. His brother uh, had given an interview where he said Elon Musk read, you know, from variety of subjects and all. And uh, uh, his partner Peter Thiel's book is there, Hunt, some star, uh, startup, I'm forgetting the name of the book, Zero to One is there. So there are, there are free economics is there, there are a good number of books that's there. You want a list of books, again, I'll give you the coordinator and everybody's, I'll give you all the contact details at the end. You can ping on those numbers and you will get a list of books that you can read and everything. But the point is you need to invest in, in yourself with respect to all these things. Now, when you talk about the scope of uh, CFA and all, so uh, you have multiple varied profiles that you can get. You can be working in the finance department of any of the companies. You could be working as an equity analyst. You could be working in the risk department. You could be working as an investment manager, portfolio manager, mutual fund houses. 
you could be working in private equity fund, funds and all hedge funds and all again equity markets real estate commodities and all these uh, traders and all these dealings a little bit of technical analysis is also there so cfa is going to be more about here not it cfa is not just about stock markets it is not about stock markets it's about finance so wherever you can apply finance you will have a position over there so cfa is about finance in general auditing you can related to forensic auditing over here because you'll have a good knowledge of fra so when you're looking at all these profiles you'll be looking at cfa over here so i've discussed the entire content wherever you can apply the content you will get that cfa institute does not give you placement you don't have a campus placement over here just the way you have it in b schools but on the institute's website you have there are there are there are uh, ways in which the institute tries to do those job listings and all but then again the way people are trying to find jobs themselves you'll have to apply uh, with your resumes you'll have to uh, uh, you know find out contacts send it through them or on the vacancies on the institute websites that is how you are supposed to be going ahead with it there is no campus placement i don't want to misguide you on any manner there is no campus placement that the institute is providing uh, with respect to this uh, of course when you have a designation it is going to give you an edge i'm hoping that when you are applying for a job again i don't want to oversell anything over here because you need to have it practically it will depend on the demand and supply of the jobs in the market but of course if you're more educated if you're well educated if you have a very good understanding of these things and if you are competent enough if your skills are good you will get a good placement and it might be a little later you will climb faster you will get promoted faster whatever it is that you will have to evaluate it yourself now the salaries could be ranging anything the average salary that quite a few websites put is uh, somewhere close to around $60,000 plus uh, but then you have to understand that $60,000 plus is not in india but it is outside india so uh, you cannot say that i'll get a 1 crore salary the moment i'm out with a degree or something like that you have to be a little practical you have to understand the economic scenario but i'm pretty positive when you're looking at any of the banking financial sectors mutual funds fund houses analysts equity firms all of these firms and the finance department of multiple companies you could be looking at something good and again it will depend on the city because when you're looking at india you will be looking at bangalore hyderabad uh, um, uh mumbai gurgaon ncr these are the regions where you'll find more jobs into the finance domain so you have to evaluate all these factors before uh, you know uh, taking forward with this part uh, so you need to start enhancing your resume so cfa is i believe is going to give you definitely a very good edge and you need to be well educated in order to you know take your career forward because people will know that okay this person knows this much of finance that is what the degree tells you and then cracking the interview is also going to be required there is a resume gdpi video online if you want you can just go through it so you'll get more details on that uh, profiles have told you outside india the salaries would be better than in india because of course the cost of living is also much much higher outside india as compared to india uh, placement assistance uh, we can provide so a lot of students send me their resumes and all i'm trying to work on something more tangible wherein we can help you out with the jobs and all there is no placement guarantee it is just that if you refer i can try to refer it through my other students or friends and uh, uh, connections and all but there is no placement guarantee over here neither does the institute gives you a clear campus placement you have to apply for jobs yourself with your work experience requirement the moment you're done with your cfa level 3 on your resume you can write cfa level 3 pass if you've cleared cfa level 2 you can write cfa level 2 pass so there is a four year work experience requirement that is not an internship or an article ship or something that you need so whether your uh, experience is before completing cfa or after completing cfa you can get a charter any time so even if your work experience is not completed but your cfa level 3 is done on your resume you can write cfa level 3 complete but beside your name after your name you will be able to write cfa after your four years experience is completed that does not mean that after doing cfa you cannot get a job because the person knows that his four years experience is not completed and but the three exam the three levels of the exams have been completed now what kind of an experience is going to be qualifying so you need to explain to the there are there are going to be mailers and all that you need to put in you need to put in the details of your job and all to the institute and you have to explain how it is related to finance teaching finance is also a part of finance experience so you have to explain how your work is related to finance job experience work experience does not mean it has to be on a job only it could be on your uh, in your own business as well so it is not like the job has to be like it has to be a job experience your business experience is also going to qualify you'll have to give two references so you know maybe your boss your colleague or something there are two references that you need to give on the website so all those things happen after level 3 so the experience part is not something that you need to worry about so that should not be an issue as such then 
uh, there were a couple of more things that I needed to talk about. So one was the overlap of the syllabus and the combination. Like a lot of people say that I am doing a, an engineering, how is it going to help? So I was just interacting with a student of mine, he was into data science and he was doing FRM. So he was trying to get, get you know, risk models and all develop. There was another one, uh, uh, not a student, I just uh, happened to interact with someone. So he did his BSc in uh, finance and then MSc in IT. So the objective was that he is getting into the development of financial related programs and all. So finance analytic programs, you know, you have a lot of softwares to do market analysis and all. So he was getting into the development of the same and all. So there could be, you don't know how exactly which combinations are going to be working. When you're looking at CA and CFA, CA has got one subject on finance, CFA is a specialization on finance. So CFA is a degree about finance. When you're looking at MBA, MBA is not a degree in finance, even if you specialize in finance, it is a degree in mass business uh, administration. So you will have variety of subjects like uh, organizational behavior, HR, finance, marketing, everything. And finance could be a specialization that you take up in the second year. So MBA is not a degree in finance. You will have more depth of finance in CFA than MBA. Another question that I get is a lot of students, friends and all of mine are doing CFA along with MBA also because CFA gives you a global designation and the charter holders do hold a value. Now with respect to getting a charter, you have to pay a certain sum of money, some $200 or so on a per annum basis, but that will happen after you are done with CFA all the three exams and when you, once you have received the charter. And mostly it is the company that you work for is going to sponsor. Because even if you don't take the charter, you can still write that you are CFA level 3 pass on your resume. So all those things comes in later, so that is not a question or a criteria right now. When you are looking at the FRM and CFA overlap, uh, there is going to be an overlap with the syllabus itself. So I would recommend you to watch or attend both the CFA and the FRM session to understand the differences in the syllabus in detail. But ideally CFA is going to be having all these subjects. In FRM you can find a little bit of, you will find an overlap here, a little bit of overlap here, very little bit of overlap here and an overlap here. The rest is different over here and that too again you are looking at three levels over here and two levels in FRM. So FRM's level two has got no overlap with any of this. FRM is a finance designation but specializing in risk management. CFA is a designation in pure finance. CFA is not about stock markets alone. It is about finance in general. Uh, so that is your scope, work experience and your job uh, requirements and all. So the scope of job will again depend on demand and supply. And I will not be able to give you any figure with respect to a salary. But of course, the harder you work, I, I don't, I personally I believe that, you know, your education never goes waste. You have to learn, you have to grow, you have to understand, you have to apply and you have to grow. You have to learn, you have to keep on growing. And even after you're done with this, you have to continuously learn after this. May not be in the form of degree, but in the terms of skill set, reading, acquiring more knowledge. Because otherwise, you know, the kind of dynamic the environment is, you'll be thrown out. You know, the moment you stop, you have to keep on moving with, with the flow. And the amount of changes that we've seen in the last couple of decades, I think it's, it's, it's just, uh, um, you know, it's hysterical the amount of changes that we've seen in the last two decades. So you have to keep on updating yourself. So that is with respect to the scope of the curriculum.